Today on The Hookup, we're going to RGB all the things by installing individually addressable RGB LED strips in my backyard as landscape lighting. And then we're going to figure out whether it's stupid, genius, or a little bit of both. My name is Rob, and I have a problem with individually addressable RGB LEDs. Seriously though, these strips are super easy to use, they're customizable, and in my experience, they're actually pretty reliable. And lately, I've been using them in all of my projects. My wife and I have been discussing landscape lighting for our backyard for a few years now, and we hadn't come up with a solution that we were both happy with. I briefly considered using those Philips Hue outdoor lights, but for $280 for only three RGB LED spotlights, I knew I could do better and individually addressable LED strips sounded like as good of a solution as any. As I said, I'm no stranger to LED projects. I've got LED strips in my bedroom, my guest room, and even my classroom. I've made custom clocks out of these things, and I even have them permanently installed on my house on the roof line for my holiday LEDs. I've had experience with the non-waterproof versions for indoor use, and my outdoor LEDs are the IP65 silicon coated variety. But for this project, I decided to test out the IP67 version of the LED strips just to do my due diligence and be able to compare the longevity of the two options. The goal of this project is simple. I just want to light up the palm trees behind our pool in the most aesthetically pleasing way possible. My original plan was to put in six vertical strips following the aluminum tubing in our pool screen, but I also wanted to be able to show how these lights would perform in a more standard horizontal configuration, since that's generally more applicable to landscape lighting. So naturally, I decided to just do both, which effectively doubled the amount of cutting and soldering that I needed to do for this project. The exact strips that I'm using are the WS2812B variety running on 5 volts. In total, I used five 5 meter strips cut into 60 LED sections for a total of 660 LEDs. As I mentioned before, these are the IP67 version, which means they should theoretically be able to survive being immersed in water up to 1 meter deep for 30 minutes without any negative impact as long as they're properly sealed. And I spent a lot of time and effort making sure that each strip was properly sealed on each end and the connections between them were waterproof. More on that later. Speaking of wiring, I ran 14 gauge Romex cable from the 5 volt 40 amp power supply located in a small cabinet on my covered patio to the first set of LEDs. These power supplies are absolutely not waterproof, so you'll definitely need to mount it in a covered area. Because the data run is so long, I did need to utilize a logic level shifter to boost the data signal from 3.3 volts to 5 volts to make sure there wasn't any corruption of the signal. The data wire for the LED runs across a horizontal strip, then up a vertical strip, and then back down that vertical channel using 18 gauge wire to the next horizontal strip. Running along the entire horizontal section is an 18 gauge power injection wire that will help ensure that the brightness and color of each strip is consistent. After installing and testing the setup, I can tell you that more power injection is still needed if I wanted to run the lights at full brightness and on white. I'll probably end up running some extra power injection directly from the first strip to the last one to try to fix that issue. I 3D printed little junction boxes for the places where the strips all connect. At each junction box, I just needed to connect all five positive wires, all five negative wires, and then route the data signal properly from one strip to the next. I soldered each of these connections, covered them in hot glue, and then put heat shrink tubing on top of that. I'm also considering filling each junction box with silicon to permanently protect the connections. My only concern with that is that it's going to make any future repairs almost impossible. Let me know what you think about that idea down in the comments. My previous reason for not using these IP67 strips was that I was worried that they'd be difficult to work with and really hard to reseal after cut. And I was 100% correct about that. These things are a huge pain to deal with. After cutting my strips to length and soldering on new wires to the ends, I needed to make sure that everything was nice and waterproof. To do this, I pushed the connections back inside the silicon sleeve, and then I filled the ends with 100% silicon sealant rated for outdoor use. Then to give it a little bit extra UV protection and make it look a whole lot nicer, I also placed the strips inside these aluminum channels and then covered them with the included plastic diffuser. On the vertical strips, I sealed the top end with silicon to prevent water from entering, but then I left the bottom of the channels open to let the water drain out in the event that some did get in. For the code, I decided to make two different control zones, one for the horizontal strips and one for the vertical strips. Each zone can have a different brightness and a different color. In the future, I may add some effects to the program, but for now, color and brightness will be enough. 
I'm running this off the same Node MCU that also controls my motorized patio shades, monitors the state of my backyard gate, and it runs one of four auxiliary sirens for my house alarm. These ESP8266 Node MCUs are extremely powerful microcontrollers, and even with all the different projects running off this single Node MCU, I'm not anywhere close to maxing out its capabilities. Since these lights will be controlled via MQTT, I needed to add two MQTT lights with color and brightness to Home Assistant one for the vertical section, and one for the horizontal sections. I chose to have the master power of the LEDs use the same state topic and command topic, but you could set them up individually if you wanted to. And now it's time to test them out to see if it was all worth it. All 660 LEDs at full brightness white is way too bright, and not at all the effect I was looking for. Turning on just the horizontal strip looks very similar to most landscape lighting that I've seen, and using only green or blue light makes for a really interesting effect. As expected, red is barely visible since plants absorb almost the whole red spectrum of light. The vertical strips provide the most aesthetically pleasing light that look very similar to a well-placed spotlight. I'm still playing around with different combinations, but I think I like blue on the horizontal strip and then green on the vertical strips. The color is subtle but noticeable, and using the green light on the palm trees highlights the leaves without lighting up the concrete wall behind them. One issue that I didn't foresee was that the structural cabling of my pool screen actually reflects the LEDs that are directly behind it, which is pretty distracting. Luckily, these are individually addressable LEDs, so I can just turn off those specific LEDs without needing to do any modification. I just created an array of LEDs that I want to stay dark all the time, and then I set those LEDs to black before calling the fast LED show function. I could use the same method to reduce the brightness of specific LED sections if I wanted to create some completely customized look. So is it worth it to use LED strips as landscape lighting? For my project, I used 5 LED strips at $21 each, 25 meters of aluminum channel at $2.30 each, a 5 volt 40 amp power supply at $21, 50 feet of Romex cable at $28, a tube of 100% silicon sealant for $5, a logic level shifter that costs about a dollar, and then I use an existing Node MCU, but I'll go ahead and add four dollars to the cost just for completeness. That means that my grand total for this project was $221.50, which is more than I thought I was going to spend, but still $50 less than just three Hue spotlights, and it has a lot more customizability. If I had only done the horizontal segments, that would have been just over a hundred dollars, and even less if I skipped the aluminum channeling. LED strip landscape lighting isn't going to work for every application. Sometimes a spotlight is just going to be a better fit. But if you're trying to light up a curved flower bed or you have an existing structure that you can mount the LEDs to, I think that strips are an excellent alternative to traditional spotlights. If you aren't planning on cutting your strips, you should consider using the IP67 silicon tubing version. But if you're going to cut custom lengths, you should definitely opt for the easier to work with IP65 variety. Though I have heard that the IP67 version is significantly more resilient if you live in a climate that experiences freezing temperatures and snow. Speaking of longevity, as I mentioned before, I've had individually addressable LEDs permanently installed on my roofline for about 18 months now without any issues. Until a few days ago when lightning struck our electrical transformer and most of the things in my house that didn't have a dedicated surge protector got cooked, including my one day old landscape LEDs and my roof line LEDs. Thankfully, in both cases, the strips actually saved themselves. The first LED in each run acted like a fuse and burned itself out to protect the rest of the strip. And after removing that one LED, I now have 659 working LEDs. Probably not a common occurrence, but good to know, I guess. I wish the fix was that simple for my $1,500 pool pump that also got blown up by the lightning strike. That one's going to be expensive. Speaking of expensive, thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, you can check out the links down in the description. If you have any questions about this project or suggestions for things to add, please leave them down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.